Right. My name is Dylan Laverell, and I'm an assistant coach for the University of Wyoming Bull Judging Team. And I'm going to talk to you guys about the grading rail. So after you have gotten a fleece, before we can even start with the rail, we have to know how to prepare this fleece in order for it to be used in bull judging. And so what we're going to want to do first after we've purchased the fleece is lay it out on the floor with the clean side on the floor and the dirty side up. The second thing we're going to do is identify where each leg is going to be and we're going to fold the sides into the middle. So the right side of the fleece will be folded in the middle and the left side of the fleece will be folded in the middle. And with that, we're going to want the clean side to be surrounding the fleece. Next, we're going to roll it like a sleeping bag or a knapsack, starting from the bridge and going to the shoulder or to the crow's nest. And from there, this is when we're gonna use these paper ties. Um, we can see it on the link here below. Um, we're gonna use paper ties to tie these fleeces. Um, we're gonna tie it in an X and we're gonna use another tie to uh, tie it more in like a cross. So as you can see here, this is an already tied fleece, but just to show how we're gonna do this, here's one of the ties and here's what we're gonna do with the other. And then we're gonna take another tie and use it like that and then dissect it in the middle there. Uh, sometimes we even use a what we call a belly and we'll wrap it around the middle if there's a lot of open fleece there. Um, if not, we just usually tuck it in to make it look nice, clean and uniform. Here's that link I will that I was talking about earlier. And here is a demonstration of us actually tying a fleece. Amy and I will be showing you how to tie a fleece, but before we get started on that, um, if you're going to send a sample to the lab and only want to send one sample, you're going to want to identify where the middle of that sheep is and take a sample from there. So on this uh, fleece, you would say that it's somewhere right here. Just grab a lock, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then send it to the lab. So the first thing what we're going to do is uh, take the sides and fold them in. So now the white part is on the outside. We've already identified that that was the bridge. So we're going to roll from the bridge to the shoulder. Awesome. Next, Amy is going to grab a tie. These ties are going to be about two arm uh, spans in length. Pick it up. This is easier with two people. One person can hold the tie while the other one is tying the knot. Then go the other direction to make your cross pattern. Then we'll go the other way to hopefully get that last side like Amy said before. Now, if you see a lot of uh, like a fleece or a lot of wool that's hanging out, just kind of tuck that in. And then on some fleeces, what we do is we use another tie and tie it around the belly, around the mid part of that fleece if we think it needs it. I think we're probably good for this fleece. Well, after we've tied the fleece, now we're ready to actually start talking about the rail. So 
the question is, what is the rail and what do we do? So a rail is a series of 15 fleeces that are evaluated on grade, staple length, yield for 4 H kids. They only evaluate those three. And when you get into the collegiate side, we also evaluate character and purity. Um, how this works is we have two minutes per fleece in a rotation, and then we have eight minutes afterwards to double check or make corrections on those fleeces. So it takes around 40 minutes to complete one rail. For grades, we have uh, five categories, and those are fine, half, three-eighths, quarter, and low quarter. For staple length, we have three categories for fine and half bloods. Otherwise, we only have two categories for three-eighths and coarser. Um, those categories are staple, French combing, and clothing. And finally, we have yield, which these are the extremes, but it's anywhere from 38 to 70 percent. Um, I would say your average is going to be closer from 53 to 65 percent. And we'll go into this a little bit more um, in detail later on the presentation. So this is the, we're first going to talk about the grades and kind of the history about them. The first one we're going to talk about is the blood grade system or the American system, as it's sometimes called. This is what 4-H and FFA uses in their contests. Um, this was introduced in the 19th century when the crosses between native coarser wool breeds and the Spanish merinos were becoming popular. So this is it's essentially saying of how much merino blood came off the sheep from the fleece or came off the fleece of what kind of sheep it was. So this is where we get into these categories. A fine is a full blood. As you guys can guess, half is a half blood merino, three eighths, quarter and low quarter respectively. A fine or full blood is the finest you can be and it just gets coarser as you go down. So this is an example of a fleece. Um, this isn't a fine fleece by any means. I believe it's a quarter blood fleece. And we'll talk about some tics, tips and tricks on how to grade these or some visual cues. All right, so the second type of grade system that we use, um, this is used in the collegiate contest is the spin count system. And this is based on, it's a little bit more precise and it's based on how many hinks of yarn one pound of clean wool can produce. I know a hank is kind of a um, new term, might be a new term for some of you. And the definition for that is 560 uh, yards of how much yarn that that fleece could make. So, and this is split into these categories. Um, that is 70s, 64, 62s, and so on. You guys can see on the screen. Um, the fine category is the 70 and 64s. 62s and 60s are halves, 56s and 58s are three eighths, 50 and 54s are quarter, and 46 and 48s are low quarter. So these guys correlate. So it means that a 64 spin count fleece, so a relatively fine fleece, can produce 64 hanks of yarn per pound of clean wool. And here's a cool little example right here. Um, this is a 64. Uh, fleece. And this is a, let's say this fleece weighs 11 pounds. All right. It's got a 58% yield. So it's going to yield roughly about 6.38 pounds of clean wool. So if we want to see how many hanks of yarn that's going to produce, it's a little bit over 408 hanks of yarn. And just for comparison, um, it's about a little over, or it's about um, 228,000 yards of yarn. If you convert that into feet, it's about 686,000 feet of yarn. So it's a very large amount. Finally, for the last grading system that we're going to talk about is the micron system. And this is the current system that is used commercially to trade wool throughout the wool world. Um, one micron is equal to one millionth of a meter or if you can look right there, it's one, one, 20, one 25th thousandth of an inch. So there are two machines that we use to determine what the micron is. And 
we either use the fiber lux, which we have one in house to be able to um, see how fine or coarse fleeces are in our, in our um, program. And additionally, there's the OFTA 2000 that is used um, more for um, places that have commercial labs. Um, here's some two commercial labs in the United States that utilize the OFTA. Um, both of these measure fiber diameter. So the diameter of each single fiber, they use that by a light spectrometer. Um, additionally, the OFTA can tell you the length in millimeters too. So that's handy when we're talking about staple length. Otherwise, um, these are very two good machines that um, help validate uh, your call. So you can see on this slide that all of these things are related to each other. So um, we use Micron to be able to get our spin count correct for our college kids. And you can use that to subsequently get your blood grade right if you'd like to. Um, so yeah, you guys can read down the list. Um, these slides should be posted, so you guys should have them. All right, so I wanna talk about fiber characteristics by location real quick. And the first is fleeces are variable in nature. So from you, when you go from the head down to the bridge, your fiber, your fiber diameter is gonna change. You can see in this picture, uh, uh, locks that are gonna come closer to the head or especially next to the shoulder are gonna be finer. Um, when, when you compare them down to um, locks that are coming back down to your bridge. Um, again, the locks down by your bridge are gonna be longer in staple length when compared to the locks that are closer to the head. Along with wool density, there's some things that change there too. But when you're really thinking about pulling locks to maybe send to a commercial testing lab, really focus in on grabbing locks from the middle part of the fleece, kind of like where I'm pointing here with my pointer with where number two is. Um, this should give you kind of the average of both extremes in a fleece to be able to get a good representation. So we, at on the college level, we make these wool kits, as you can see below, to help our kids um, kind of take that wool home with them and to be able for them to like study and just have practice looking at wool. You guys can see here, um, it goes from 80s. We use black felt. We go from finest to coarsest. Um, you might ask why there's a lot of room on top of this wool kit. Well, we use that room to staple in other fleeces or other locks from fleeces. So we have a wide array. Um, Cause sometimes we'll talk about this a little later but that crimp will mess you up and you really have to look at that fiber diameter to be able to get a good um, call or an accurate call on that fleece. So this is what we use. Um, here's some, some things that we can take from this wool kit is that your fleeces are typically going to be longer staple. So a lock is, is synonymously called a staple. So they're gonna be increased in staple length the coarser the fleece gets. Um, additionally, I'll go on to that next slide. Uh, we're gonna talk about crimp. So crimps are the waves that are found in a lock of wool. And typically you're, you'll have more crimps per inch or smaller crimps with a finer style fleece than when you compare it to a coarser fleece. So down there on the bottom, uh, the bottom left-hand corner of your screen that's a very nice character, what looks like to be a merino fleece or even a finer ramble A. You guys can see those waves or that crimp is very small when you compare it to the picture down in your bottom right. This is from uh, Lincoln Long Wool, it appears like, or another coarse wool breed where those crimps are super long. So to talk about some definition, the curvature, as you guys can see in that, um, bottom or in that top picture uh, quantifies the fiber crimp or waviness. And this is some laboratory measurement. They can sometimes measure curvature. Um, spreading out the fibers, um, this allows the fiber diameter to be seen. So typically what we will do, if you guys can see uh, my picture, is we'll grab a lock of wool 
and we'll just spread them out, spread those fibers out and sometimes move them across your fingers to be able to see how big those fibers really are. Um, the smaller the fiber is, the finer it's going to be. And subsequently, the larger the fiber is, the coarser um, that fleece is going to be. Additionally, you'll sometimes see webbing on some of your finer fleeces. Um, this is due to the high surface area that is found with the more crimps and those um, finer fleeces that allow the fleece to be um, touching on, holding on to each other when you spread the locks on farther apart. Finally, the handle is the softness to the touch. Finer fleeces are gonna be softer, especially on the backside of your hand when compared to coarser fleeces. Awesome, now we're gonna move on to the second part of the grading rail, which is evaluating staple length. So like, as I said earlier, staple length is the length of a lock of wool from base to tip. Base is going to be this, where the shear was, sh where the shear shore, the sheep close to the skin, and the tip is going to be where um, that lock of wool was most exposed to the outside. Typically longer is better. And we're gonna explain a little bit more about that later. Um, one way to measure to see if something makes staple, staple is to measure your middle finger. During the contest, you're not allowed to bring in a ruler or any sort of measuring device. So if you measure your middle finger, I know mine's a little bit over in three and a quarter inches. So I can help better make my staple calls if I know how long my middle finger is. And then here's where we need to talk about breaks versus tender fleeces. If you guys look on the picture on the right, here's a really good example of what's considered a break. And then So breaks versus tender fleeces. Uh, the picture to your right is a good example of what is considered a break versus what is considered tender. So this occurs when there's some sort of stress that um, the sheep has that it doesn't allow it to get all its nutrition that it needs or then it won't be able to allow that to get to the wool that's growing. So there's going to be a, a short period of time when that fleece is going to be just tender or it will break. And the difference is, as you guys can see, that picture, a break is gonna come clean and it's gonna look like you cut it with a pair of scissors. Now that might be a very extreme looking break, but it's gonna look uh, very clean and crisp when you guys check um, versus something that's tender. You guys could see like that top kind of looks halfway clean, but when you get down to that bottom, part of that locked to the lock to the right. Um, you can see that it's uh, just kind of very variable where it's gonna break. So that's what we would consider tender. And the way you measure this is if you, once you guys pull a lock, you're gonna wanna put one hand on one side, one hand on the other side of the lock and just kind of shake it uh, like this. Um, this is a pretty strong fleece. This one doesn't have a break or it's, and it's not tender, but that's how you measure it. And usually if you guys can hear that little sound, it's going to be hard to hear it right now, but um, that's how you know it's going to be good. So here's your staple length requirements. This is what we use in the collegiately. This is what we use in 4-H for each uh, grade. So the first thing you're going to want to do for a fleece is figure out what grade the fleece is, and then you can make your staple call um, based upon that. If uh, something breaks, then you're gonna to wanna to see how long that part of the staple is to make your call. So say we had a fleece that we called a half blood fleece. And before the break, it was three and a half inches long. So it would have made staple, but it had a tip break and it broke at half inch off. So we're now at three inches. So this is going to be in French combing in the French combing category for the half blood grade. Um, another thing you guys might notice, like I said before, um, fleeces are going to be need to be longer, the um, coarser they are. 
you guys can see that on that sheet. Additionally, there's no French combing category for the three eighths, the quarter blood and the low quarter blood. Um, the best way to remember this is just memorization. I've uh, heard of teams that have been um, using flashcards and like making a matching game out of this, but uh, more repetition on this is going to be the key into knowing this chart. Awesome. So now we're going to talk about the third and final part for the 4-H contest, which is yield. Uh, yield works similarly how we see on like the carcass and live side of animals, where the yield is a ratio, which is expressed as a percentage of clean fleece weight to greasy fleece weight. All right. So clean fleece weight is when that fleece is clean throughout the scouring process. And the greasy fleece weight is uh, this comes straight off the sheet. So there are going to be three diminishing effects that will really harm a fleece's yield. The first one is going to be um, dirt or lanolin, or excuse me, dirt or soil. And dirt penetration is in the locks. So you can sometimes see that. Or if there's a ring of dirt around the fleece when you're evaluating it, those are some very good indicators that you might want to lower the yield. Um, the, and this is going to be the biggest effect on yield. The second diminishing effect is lanolin. And lanolin is an oil that sheep make naturally to help protect the wool follicles. Um, you guys might recognize this as it is found in a lot of um, makeups, um, some hair gels, lotion, and things to that nature. It won't have as much of an effect as soil but it's still something very important to consider. And finally is vegetable matter. So this might be dried hay, straw, or other organic material that is dried. And as this might not be the most optimal when harvesting wool, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because it's relative, should be relatively light. So fire fleeces are gonna have more follicles per square inch and more surface area for dirt to attach. And this is gonna happen because those crimps are so much shorter. Additionally, they will possess more lanolin. So you would expect uh, finer fleeces to have more dirt in them, them to have a lower yield. And then when we compare that to coarser fleeces, it's essentially just the opposite. And we expect them to be higher yielding. Um, from this table, you guys can see that great staple portion is essentially the same. Um, it's that yield that's going to change a little bit. Um, this is, there's no set yields for any of the grades. This is something we use with our uh, collegiate judges and we ask them, okay, does this fleece look dirty? Does it look somewhere like average or does it look clean? Um, you'll get to know this more after you look at more fleeces, but this is a good uh, chart to kind of know um, while you're judging. Um, here's the scoring guide on um, the 4-H side. And this is what Wyoming 4-H uses on their grading rail. So you guys can see on the left-hand column, uh, if you get your grade correct, that's five points. If you're one grade off, you only get two points. And if you're more than one grade off, you don't get any points for that column. Length, you either get it or you don't, you get five points or not. And yield, as you guys can see there, if you're in between four points, you get five, you get the full five points. If you're in between 8%, you get two points. And if you're above 8%, you don't get anything. So let's look at some examples. On this sheet, that first column, um, you're one grade off, so you get two points. The next column, you're right on, so you get five. And the third column, you're more than two off, so you're not going to get any points for that one. Additionally, if you don't mark a box, you're not going to get any points. Or if you double mark a box, you're not going to get any points. All right, when we talk about staple length, you either get it or you don't. So this one, this person called it staple, and it was French, so they don't get any points for that. The rules are a little different in the collegiate side, but this is how Wyoming 4-H does theirs. So you guys can see in the second box right here, they got the correct um, call for that, so they get all five points. 
Just like before, if you don't mark anything, you're going to get zero points. Um, that's shown there as well. I think the biggest part about that one was if they called that grade a quarter blood, it's going to be, have to be really short for it to um, be clothing. So just kind of be cognizant of where you're calling your grade versus where you're going to call your staple length. Um, more of the same over when with the yield, if you're within 8%, um, you get two points. If you're within 4%, like it is from 45 to 49, you get all five points. And if you're within this one, it's 10%, so that's above eight, so you're not gonna receive any points for that. So just kind of how the scoring goes on here is um, you just add up all these boxes on the grade, your length, and your yield. So, and it's all gonna be out of 225 points. Um, wherever I filled out this, I didn't do all that well for this example. Um, it's a 114 points out of 225. So here are some final tips and tricks for you guys to use while you guys are judging. Um, it's gonna be on you to look on your wool kits because that's how you're gonna be more, the most successful in using the grading line. As you guys saw in this previous example, if you guys got your grade, if you get your grade right, you're gonna be more likely to call staple and your yield correct. So if you guys look at your wool kits, you're just going to be more successful overall. Additionally, what we use is a clipboard with a lanyard and it's super easy when you're doing the grading reel to lift up your, your uh, clipboard, fill out your um, respective columns and just lay it down so you can are ready to pick up the next fleece. I usually have a rag or a towel in my back pocket to be able to wipe off my hands in between places. This helps um, when you have a fleece that has a lot of lanolin in it. And sometimes things don't feel the same if your hands are coated in lanolin. Um, there's no rules that, saying you, that says that you can't compare fleeces that you just judged. If you know that grade, just stick a hand over it. Be courteous to the people around you, but you are allowed to just real quick pull a lock from that previous fleece in order to help the fleece, whatever you're on. And if it's close, this kind of goes for the officials or if you're coaching them, if it's close, call it. So like if you have a fine fleece that's 2.999 inches in terms of staple length, don't be the person who is just gonna call that fringe. Either throw it out or call it clothing because it's super close. Now, if, uh, it's important to teach that fleeces are variable in nature, but if there's something that's just out landish in terms of the variability of that fleece, just throw it out. Um, you're not really going to help anyone and there's not a lot of lessons to learn. And the main point of the rail is to test your evaluation skills or test the evaluation skills of your judges. It's not to pull the wool over uh, someone's eyes. So with that, um, if you have any questions or looking for more resources, I uh, click on that link. Uh, this will bring you to the Wyoming 4-H um, contest wool judging page. And there's a lot of resources there about contest rules, more forms. And additionally, if you ever have questions, uh, contact Wit Stewart um, at wit.stewart at uwyo.edu. Thanks.